Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, the people of God say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 14th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, our text this morning is going to be taken out of Judges chapter 17, verse 6, but it can also be found in Judges chapter 21 and verse 25, and it basically says this, everyone did what was right in their own eyes. Now, the reason I bring that text to you this morning is because I want to ask you a question. What is truth? You see, Pontius Pilate asked that very question of Jesus some 2,000 years ago, and it has perplexed society ever since. So the question again is, what is truth? Now, if you're a Christian, you're immediately going to go to the Bible and you're going to say, well, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the word expressed in living human form. And so, therefore, Jesus and the Bible are the truth. And I would agree with you on that. But when talking to the common man about what truth is, it's not quite that clear. You see, there is a new word that has made its way into the English language, and it's called post-truth. And if you're not familiar with what that is, by the end of this time together today, you will be. George Barna, in his annual book of statistics, did a study, and he found that only 9% of those claiming to be born again have a biblical worldview. In other words, they take their worldview from what the Bible teaches. Only 9%, friends. That means only 9 out of every 100 people define their lives around what the Bible teaches. So if they're not following the Bible, what are they following? Well, let's continue. Chuck Colson, who is a very popular Christian author and writer and speaker, made this quote. The church's singular failure in recent decades has been the failure to see Christianity as a life system. Now, every day when we begin our time together, I start with the words, holiness is a way of life. And I hope that those words just don't go in one ear and out the other for you, but that you truly pattern your life around a lifestyle of holiness. But Chuck Colson says here, this is the single most failure in recent decades among God's people. It's a failure to see Christianity as a life system or worldview that governs every area of existence. Dr. Albert Moeller said, have we now reached a stage of social evolution that is beyond honesty? That fascinating question is raised by author Ralph Keyes in his book, The Post-Truth Era, Dishonesty and Deception in Contemporary Life. Keyes said, I think it's fair to say that honesty is on the ropes. Deception has become commonplace at all levels of contemporary life. By the time you finish reading the post-truth error, says Dr. Moeller, Keyes is likely to have convinced you that dishonesty is now the order of the day and that deception has now been institutionalized at virtually every level of American culture. Keyes goes on to say, even though there have always been liars, Lies have usually been told with hesitation, a dash of anxiety, a bit of guilt, a little shame, at least some sheepiness. But he says, now, clever people that we are, we have come up with rationales for tampering with truth so that we can tell these lies guilt-free. We no longer tell lies. Instead, we misspeak. We exaggerate. We exercise poor judgment. We admit mistakes were made, but we will not admit that we are liars. The term deceive gives way to the most playful spin on the word lie. At worst, saying, I wasn't truthful, sounds better than I lied. Wikipedia says this about post-truth. Post-truth 
is a political culture in which debate is framed largely by appeals to emotion disconnected from the details of policy and by the repeated assertion of talking points to which factual rebuttals are ignored. Did you get that? To which facts are ignored. Post-truth differs from traditional contesting and falsifying of truth by rendering it of secondary importance. Political commentators have identified post-truth politics as ascendant in America, Australia, British, China, India, Japan, Russia, and Turkish politics, as well as in other areas of debate. It's driven by a combination of the 24-hour news cycle, false balance in news reporting, and the increasing ubiquity of social media. A defining trait of post-truth politics is that campaigners continue to repeat their talking points, even if these are found to be untrue by the media or independent experts. Michael Deacon, parliamentary sketch writer for the Daily Telegraph, summarized the core message of post-truth as facts are negative, facts are pessimistic, facts are unpatriotic. Do you understand the importance and the danger of what is taking place here? The Washington Post said this about post-truth. It's official. Truth is dead. Facts are passe. Oxford Dictionary has selected post-truth as 2016's International Word of the Year. The dictionary defines post-truth as relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. Now, this is where it should be starting to hit home for you. Cambridge Dictionary defined post-truth as relating to a situation in which people are more likely to accept an argument based on their emotions and beliefs rather than based on facts. Dr. James Emery White, another well-known speaker and author, says the idea behind post-truth is that actual facts do not matter. What matters is how you feel. For you as an individual are the final arbiter of truth. Truthiness, which is another word for post-truth, is the bald assertion that we are not only to discern truth for ourselves from the facts at hand, but to create truth for ourselves despite the facts at hand. It's not simply that objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than emotional appeals. It's that we deny the existence of objective truth itself, and we make emotion our final authority. Now, friends, as I've been reading some of these excerpts to you from these national posts and news outlets, many things should have been triggering in your mind. But ultimately, what it all boils down to is exactly what Dr. James Emery White said here. The truth behind post-truth is that actual facts do not matter. What matters is how you feel as an individual. And so everyone is doing what is right in their own eyes. And that's why we, as Christians have been witness to so many things that are taking place in the land that we live, and we question these things, how can they make these decisions? How can someone who is born a male consider themselves a female, like Bruce Jenner? They're ignoring the biological facts, and they're following their own emotions. That, friends, is post-truth. How can a woman, when a doctor says that a baby has a heartbeat at early as one month old, abort her baby at two, three, four months old? Because she is following her emotions and not the facts. How can Christians allow a woman pastor into the pulpit or a homosexual priest into the pulpit or a lesbian female minister into the pulpit? How can they do these things? They're following their emotions and they're not following the facts. As Christians, our facts come from the Word of God. 
And the Bible is very clear on these things, as well as many others. And so as Christians, what we must do is we must pattern our lives according to the Word of God. And we must be very careful about following into this idea of postmodernism. And this means that we are going to be very unpopular, even among those whom we would consider as family, biologically, and family spiritually. They're going to turn against us, just as the Bible said they would. And the reason is, is because they are following their emotions and they're not following the facts, which again is the Bible. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the word. So the facts for us as Christians come from the Bible. You see, Yahweh says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. In other words, don't follow your emotions. Follow me. We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, that the gospel can seem foolish to the human mind. Why? Because the human mind wants to follow his emotions and not the word of God. And so friends, let's end by saying this today. Let's make it our prayer that God will not only bring us out, but he will bring others out of this delusion and that he will be their rule of authority and they will no longer follow the emotions of their hearts. Post-truth, it's a dangerous thing, friends, and it's not going away. It's only the beginning. It's only the tip of the iceberg of what is coming. But this is evidence of why they're going to hate us to such a high degree because they're going to follow their emotions into what they think is right as opposed to following the word of God and to what he says is right. I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you spent a few moments again with us today, and I pray that the word of God is shaping you, molding you, and forming you into the man and woman of God that he created you to be. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.